example. I think as, as, as small business owners, and particularly in the early stages, you know, I see that I see so many try to do everything. You know, get the best website, get the best SEO, get the best social media uh, portfolio, get you know, get this, get that. I just think do one thing really well, and um, you'll have you'll have great success. Are you a corporate SKP and wasting valuable time attempting to figure challenges out on your own? Well, this podcast is for you. We bring you firsthand experiences of guests going through many of the struggles you face each and every day. We get real with no corporate BS. And now over to your host, Paul Higgins. Hello and welcome to Corporate Escapees. Our guest today is someone who had a very successful career in the advertising industry. However, he felt that he was never really given the opportunity to show his true creative talent. Realizing this, he actually left in the mid-2000s to run his own business, be in control. And what he's done is gone through a wonderful journey of helping so many people create brilliant marketing for their own business. But he's now also the number one marketing podcast in Australia and one of the best or among one of the best in the world. There is absolute marketing gold dripping from the studio for business owners. He talks about the importance of killer content and why it is never too late to have your own content platform. With all of his experience, it would be remiss of me not to dig really deep into podcasting. This is a must-listen interview with plenty of humour, definitely from one side of the mic. I'll do now is hand you over to Timbo Reid from Small Business Big Marketing. Welcome, Tim slash Timbo Reid, to the Corporate Escape E podcast brought to you by Build, Live, Give. So, Tim, you know, I've been a huge fan of your show. You actually got me into po- podcasting, so Jeez. I'm so excited about this today. Oh, but I'm, it's, to I'm, I'm honoured. I'm absolutely honoured. I wouldn't be 115 episodes in if it wasn't for you, my man. So uh, <laughs> I really appreciate it. So well, let's kick off with something that your family or friends would know about you that we wouldn't. Yeah, that I'm an introvert, actually. Um, you know, given what I do, um, you know, you get it, Paul. You're a podcaster. We can be seen to be a little bit extroverted. Um, I do a lot of speaking at conferences. I MC a lot of conferences. And so that requires a certain amount of extroversion. Um, but I guess I'm an introverted extrovert. So um, I love my quiet time. Um, I love my me time. Um, I don't, you know, as much as I love to put a smile on the dial of uh, my audiences or whoever wants to listen, really, yeah. um, uh, I, I, I am quite, I like that quiet space and, um, and really search it out. Great. And, and where, where, you know, where do you sort of do your best thinking? Where, where's that quiet time for you? Look, I, I'm lucky enough to live uh, on the Sunshine Coast in Australia, Paul, and I love the beach. I had a, um, I'm not really into astrology, but someone said to me a few years ago, they said, what's your star sign? I said, oh, look, I'm on the cusp of Aries and Taurus, so I kind of identify um, as a Taurian. And um, they said, well, that's an earth sign, and um, therefore you're, you're a very earthy person, but you need a lot of water. And I'm, I do, I need to know that there is water close by, preferably salt water and preferably with surf. And... Um, so um, I tend to go down the beach a lot, walk into the national park and, and kind of get do, do my best thinking in those kind of environments, certainly not at a desk and certainly not sort of sitting around a boardroom table because that <laughs> sends me to sleep. Excellent. Well, why don't we get to that, you know, um, your corporate escapee story. I know, you know, you started back in Clearinger in 1988 mm-hmm. and, you know, you worked through uh, a lot of corporate then into this great journey of yours. Just give us a snapshot of what it was like to work in corporate and what made you make the transition? Um, gee, gee, what, 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 I, I didn't really like it. Um, it was very good to me. I worked for 10 years at a large advertising agency. I was the marketing manager at Flight Centre. I worked at Smorgan Steel. Uh, so I've, I've had some, you know, th- those corporate type jobs and gee, they were very good to me. I learned a lot. Um, I earned some good coin and really honed my skills, sharpened my sword. But, um, there was always something niggling at me, Paul, particularly in advertising where I just, things just didn't feel right. Um, mm-hmm. Two things. One is that I felt bound by the, the, the nature of corporate culture. You know, I, I, I couldn't just go out and, you know, do what I wanted to when I wanted to. Um, and there's a more kind of micro part of that, which is in advertising, there's generally three departments, which is account service, um, creative and media. Um, I was in account service, which is essentially management, strategy, writing, all that kind of stuff. And um, 
I should have been in creative because I am a creative soul at heart. We all are, really. Um, but I was never getting a chance to express my creativity. So on reflection, and as I you know, develop a bit of grey hair, um, I started to realise that that was, that was what was sort of eating at me. And um, so, you know, um, glad I went through the corporate thing, probably wished I'd got out sooner. It was good to me, but now I'm, I'm very proudly wear the cubicle escapee badge uh, <laughs> on my le- left lapel. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, and I'm assuming back then, uh, you know, being in the water and on the beach and taking calls probably wasn't wasn't very kosher. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I couldn't sort of say to my boss, this, I'm just going to for a walk around Elbert Park Lake, which is a beautiful lake in Melbourne. Um, I'll be back in three hours. Wasn't going to cut it, which is kind of kind of dumb really because you know as well as I do that, Great managers should say to their people, "Get just get the job done." Yeah. I, I think, I think, you know, some people aren't able to do that. Some people don't have the self discipline. But, you know, I always felt there was this kind of need to be there from like, you know, the terrible eight. It sort of started nine to five, and then it became eight till six, and then it became you know seven thirty till seven. And it's like, that's just dumb. You know, I was a young bloke back then, so I was happy to do it, but. um I think um, I'm much more interested in getting the job done than being there. It's one thing I noticed in, in starting my own business is that um, as soon as it's your own business, you get the job done as quickly as you can so you can get Correct. down the beach. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And, and look, um, we, you know, I worked at Coca-Cola in Macquarie Street in Sydney and had that beautiful aspect. And now if I did a performance review or I had a meeting with someone, we'd do a walking meeting. No, we just walk around the opera yes. house and like the creativity and, and what came out of that versus, you know, you and me in a desk in an office. It was just Correct. a completely different shift. So I completely understand that. And when you did make the step, was it harder or easier than you thought? Uh, it was easier. It was definitely easy. I was lucky. I mean, from a financial point of view, um, I was lucky enough. My last corporate job was with Smorgan Steel. I was working on a project for them. It came to, it was a contract. Uh, it came to an end and they said, listen, get, we know you want to start your own business. Go and start it. We'll be your first client. Oh, um, so I had a little bit of insurance, if you like, to do that. Um, I suppose I've never been one to sort of sit and worry about where the next dollar's coming from. I mean, I do. I mean, as a small business owner, we all do. But I also tend to operate it fairly much from the heart. I'm everything you're not, Paul. Um, <laughs> You know, that's terrible. I'm sure you offer, you have a very deep, beautiful heart, but you know what I mean? I'm one of those gut feel guys and, mate, I've just rolled along and, you know, here I am 12 years later and, um, you know, you just continue to roll along and do what feels right. Yeah, great. And, look, I, I, I constantly have fight with myself. I did marketing and accounting at uni. And, you know, that's me. Like, you know, it depends yes. who I'm talking to as to which hat yes. I basically have on. But, uh, no doubt. Yeah, yeah the rational and the emotional. Correct, correct. And this is my fa- mother and father. My father's incredibly creative, great, you know, great sense of humour, et cetera. And then my mum's more of a, a doer planner. So, uh, yeah, I, I swap. But um, <laughs> just, just on the journey, who, who sort of helped you along the way? You know, who, any mentors or anything that you've been part of to, to develop as a business owner? Um, I haven't been a part of uh, – do you mean the small business journey or just my career yeah, journey? Yeah, your small general? business journey. Uh yeah, look, I've probably not. I've never had a formal mentor. Um, I've never had a business coach, but I there are a couple of people in my life who uh, they've been there for me, and I've deferred to any. I can defer to any time I want to, and you know they're just you know, they're generally just regular sort of half mate catch ups and half business catch ups, and um, they're people whose opinions I respect, and and they've got a bit of wisdom about them, so. I guess I look to them. And if I've got a particular issue around, you know, a particular area of my business, then I'll just go and find someone who's, who I know has nailed that area and tap them on the shoulder. Brilliant. Great. And uh, so we're going to the next section, which is the build section. And, you know, I think most of my audience would have heard you. Your podcast is so prolific. And I think you really set the way. I'm being honest here at the, uh, with the Small Business Big Marketing podcast. But when people ask you, what do you do, Timbo? What, what do you say? Well, my marketing wanker uh, response to that, Paul, <laughs> is I show small business owners how to be resistible. Um, and I guess that's what I mean, as much as that is a bit of a wanky answer, my, my purpose of that response is to get them to say, well, that's interesting. How, how do you do that? Um, and, you know, how I do that is by shining a bright light on the very dark art of marketing because most mm-hmm. small business owners uh, 
look at marketing and are completely bamboozled by it. And for good reason. It's a landscape that's changed significantly year on year, uh, month by month. Uh, there has never been a better time to market your small business uh, because of the nature of the technology and what's available to us business owners that have minimal budgets. We can now punch way above our marketing weight and we can really, you know, look much bigger than we are. However, in order to do that, you kind of need to know what, what's going on. And so I, I, I like to think, I used to be the guy who was sort of like the coach, consultant, marketing coach slash consultant. And I've kind of stepped back a little bit, a fair bit from that actually now. And I like to see myself as more of the conduit between um, the, the business owner and, and marketing magic, if you like, which sounds completely wanky. But what I mean by that is the podcast allows me to do that. I can bring so much information to small business owners by, by the Small Business Big Marketing Show. And because it's now on Virgin Airlines, it's got great coverage on, on iTunes and Spotify and various other places. And as a result of that, I've also, I also get asked to speak at a lot of conferences. So I just like to see myself as the guy who knows a little bit more than my listeners and my audience, and I can be the, the person who brings them that information because I don't know it all. Like I certainly don't know it all, um, but I like to bring it to them. And I almost could answer that your question, Paul, is like I'm now the journalist, but I don't seem I'm sort of not, I don't want to be a journalist. I just want to be that conduit, if you like. Yeah, well, what what was going through my head? The image was the conductor. You know, you basically yep. the business owners up there on the stage performing, and the support is the orchestra, and you're basically conduct, conducting. There it you go. Was the image I'll take that that I had. There you go. Um, and you know, you know so much about this space. Most of people listening right now are you know really want more leads you know most people want more leads they want more revenue and you know they do get bamboozled by marketing and to be honest i've been burnt more times than i should you know i'm ex-marketing director at coke but small business very different so what are your key tips on what are the things that are working at the moment best for for what you're seeing through your podcast you know i just love content i i i'll go back a step i love being helpful Yes, uh, and I've written a book called The Boomerang Effect, and that the whole premise of that, the, the, the underlying the boomerang effect, is the fact that the more helpful you are in the mar- in your marketing, it will return multiples. Okay, so what I mean by that is, I'll give you an example in my business. Um, I started a podcast, the Small Business Big Marketing Show. It's ten years old, um, and it's a help. If you listen to it, your marketing will improve. If you listen to it and implement, your marketing will improve, and that's me being helpful. Mm-hmm. Okay. In me being helpful, the boomerang effect takes, takes effect. I get calls from potential sponsors who want to sponsor my show, income stream. I get calls from people who want to be coached, income stream. I get calls from the media who say, would you come and do a radio show on you know, such and such, uh, income stream. I get calls um, if, to, from people who want me to speak at their conference or MC their conference. So this is a classic example of create helpful content and not only will you position yourself as an industry, as an opinion leader in your industry, but you will get warm leads. People will ring you. I mean, what happens to me, and it, it, it's not just in the last couple of years, but sort of two or three years into my podcast, I would get phone calls or emails from people saying, hey, Timbo, you don't mind if I call you Timbo, do you? Or, hey, Tim, I, I feel like I know you, but it's great to, you know, and like, yes. so... That's incredible. And, and, and people could be listening and going, oh, yeah, but you've been doing your podcast for 10 years. Like, that's just a defeatist attitude. And I hear that all the time. Like, you know, you, you started early. But, um, I, I, it, it, and I'm not, this is not a podcasting discussion. This is a content discussion. So, you know, the opposite of the other answer to your question could have been, I'll oh, go and run some ads in the local paper, get someone to do some outbound calling, um, do some Facebook ads, do, uh, optimize your SEO, all that stuff, which is all good stuff. Um, and we can talk about that, but in terms of what I like, um, I love the fact that, you know, one of the major changes that we're seeing in the marketing world is the ability, if I was to dumb it down, to create your own show. This is incredible. You, yes. You've got your own show. I've got my own show. Um, they're podcasts. You can have a YouTube channel because you've got an iPhone. You go and shoot some video and put some helpful stuff up on you. That's another show. You can self-publish a book so easily these days. You can become a blogger. You can become a social media influencer. And whilst all these things are easy to sort of reel off your tongue, um, the technology behind producing any of that stuff is really easy. The magic 
and where you where you will either fail or succeed is creating the best content right so the, the creative challenge is to create awesome an awesome podcast or an awesome youtube channel or write an awesome book and um i'm just really big on this and people start and drop off um, i was talking to a bloke over lunch he said oh, i've started a podcast you know you inspired me to do it a few years ago He's eight, he's eight episodes in. I said, you are absolutely at the point where you know, you're either going to keep going or you're just going to give up. Yes. And um, I see it all the time. So um, long answer to... No, look, it's a very, a very great answer. The one thing I really put a smile on my face is that you said two to three years in. I'm about 18 months, nearly two years. So mm. you reckon the phone might start calling soon? Well, you know, it, 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 yeah, absolutely, it should. Um, on the premise that you're creating great content, on, the, on you know, the fact that you've done 115 episodes and you're two to three years in is kind of not that interesting. Yes. What's interesting is that your content is and is really good. You know, is media quality. Um, I don't try to be like a, a radio program, but I, there's things you can learn from the mass media that us indep- independent media can do better so you know spending great time on production quality on on you on the sonic sound of your sonic nature of your podcast or on the on the the the, the, the creativity of your video whatever you choose to do but um yeah absolutely the phone should start ringing and you know, there's obviously things too like you've got to market your marketing as i always say which is it's all very well to have 115 episodes or in my case i've got 459 i hate to play one up and chip but let's play that um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That sounds terrible. But, That's um, right. I think I'll you catch know, you in 10. Yeah, well, well <laughs> you never know, mate. You never know. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's about then taking that and marketing that marketing. So keep keep um, breathing life back into old episodes, boosting them on Facebook, sending individual episodes on a topic to, an, to one person who you know will really benefit from it, um, reaching out to chambers of commerce and getting in front of them and saying hey listen you know well whatever it may be developing yeah. partnerships that are of strategic value to what you're you're doing and so um yeah i just think we're, we we just live in such incredible times and 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 just to, to to wrap all that up paul is that you know from a technology point of view don't go don't then start asking i don't know what camera to buy i don't know what microphone to get i don't know who's going to edit it like we have got the most incredible marketing machine in our pockets, in our smartphones, yes. right? Totally, and totally um, that's where it all begins. Yeah, no, look, uh, brilliant, brilliant. Um, and, you know, I think for me, in all honesty, like we do a lot of work with LinkedIn um, as a sort of key platform and for B2B. And I, I changed the message the other day. So when anyone sends me a request, I say, you know, um, I don't accept anyone unless they've got a personal uh, customized thing so we send it back and we say basically how did you come across me love to know how you come across me did you uh, read one of my uh, posts or have you listened to my podcast and it's amazing like I didn't know you know I never really got direct feedback from people and, and now people are saying yeah like I love your podcast I've been listening to it and I'm like well I was completely oblivious to that mm-hmm. I knew the download mm-hmm. numbers but I hadn't got that connection so yeah, um, yeah, yeah I, mate, I still get that I still like them in I just get shocked, you know, sometimes like you, like you, right now, you and I having a chat, you wonder whether anyone's going to listen. Um, I'm just really pleasantly surprised each time I go to a conference or around the place and someone says, oh, you know, I listen to your podcast or you inspired me to do my own or whatever it is. And um, that's incredible. Yeah, and I think I love your point around, you know, don't expect it to be an overnight success. Like don't, no. don't sweat on the download numbers, you know, just just keep at it, improve this skill and then the audience will will come and I think that's what I love about you, you know, talking about that content piece. Get the content right, you'll always get the audience. Don't worry if it, you know, if it's too saturated, everyone goes, oh, the market's too saturated, terrible time to launch. I'm like, no. Just if you've got brilliant content, people will always be attracted to it. So many limiting beliefs out there around this stuff. It's too expensive. It takes too much time. Um, it's complicated. Um, it's, it's, the market's flooded. It's too late. The boat's left the shore. It's all crap uh, because... The reality is, uh, if you took that attitude in life, you'd never do anything. You know, show me an uncrowded marketplace. You know, go to the supermarket and see how many, how many there's 20 washing powder brands on the, on the thing. There'll be, there'll be 21 next week. Correct. You know, so tell, tell Uber there was too many taxis in the world. Tell them there were too many taxis. You know, tell everyone that there's too many of anything. It's just like, just focus on being the best. And there, therein lies the challenge. And if that freaks you out, then 
I'm sorry, but um, that's that's the that's the oh, that's the exciting part of of what we do. I think. Yeah, and look, and I think um, I don't know if you still provide the service or not, but I, I know that to expedite, you talked to earlier. You know, if you need expertise, go and find someone. I call it the plus one model, mm-hmm. and you know, I think if if I was starting my journey again, I did a bit of it, but I would have actually invested and got it right. Actually, I think I reached out to you, but at the time, you know, um, mm-hmm. you were too famous, and I my <laughs> bank was empty. But uh, if I had my time again, I would have found the money just to yeah, right. get it right the first time. So if you're listening here, you know, don't feel like you've got to sort it all out for yourself. There's some great services out there. I don't know, Timbo, you can talk if you've still got your service available, but I think there's some great services to take that heavy lifting off off your shoulders. Yeah, look, it is. I mean, I'm, I, I pick, uh, I, I always have two or three coaching clients going along at, at any time, not that many because I just want to kind of back off on that part of my business at the moment. But yeah. um and you can find out more over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. But um, there is a problem. I was talking to someone about this only this morning where um, as, as a cubicle SKP or someone in the early stages of starting your own business, marketing is tough and it's even tougher to find someone to help you because you probably don't have uh, the knowledge. Um, and that's where podcasts come in and go and read and, you know, go and join chambers of commerce and, and just network and things and ask others. Um, but you don't have the budget to employ a marketing agency necessarily. So you're sort of stuck in that middle ground, um, which can be tough. And um, there's no easy solution except, you know, do, do, do one or two things well. I think as, as, as small business owners and particularly in the early stages, you know, I see that I see so many try to do everything. You know, get the best website, get the best SEO, get the best social media uh, portfolio, get you know, get this, get that. Um, for you know, for my business, Paul, um, I have just focused on podcasting, yes. um, and 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 chose to do that as well as I can versus you know, doing becoming a social media influencer on bloody Instagram or you know whatever else it is. Um, I just think do one thing really well and um, you'll have you'll have great success. Yeah, look, I'm with you. I always talk about one killer marketing asset. Like, you know, what's that one killer marketing asset that are going to attract people to you rather than you always reaching out? And I think a podcast is brilliant. I think, like you mentioned before, a book is great. And then if you love to blog, you know, love to do YouTube, whatever it is, yeah. pick what you're passionate about, pick what you're going to be best at and do that. I love to talk. Um, so podcasting, actually I love to listen and then I love to talk back. Mm -hmm. So I think podcasting was mine and you're right. That's all I've done. I'm just about to launch a book. Um, but podcasting is the key and, and just, um, so, you know, you talk about how difficult it is to get that, um, other than your show, which I think is brilliant. Is there any other shows that, you know, you listen to, you know, your audience listens to, to get that marketing, um, knowledge. Listen, it's funny. I, I consume. I don't consume a lot of business content these days. I do love the. There's a podcast called How I Built This, which yes. is. Uh, it comes out of the states, hosted by a guy called Guy Roz, and um, he gets in front of the founders. And I don't know how he does it, but he gets in front of the founders of billion dollar brands and basically asks the question, "How did you do it? How did you build it?" And um, I really enjoy that because there's a documentary style nature to to the show. It's one of those podcasts that would take tens of hours to put together um, yes. and, and it's got beautiful production qualities, all that stuff. So um, I, I really enjoy that. And then I spend the rest of my time listening to comedy uh, and a bit of true crime. So right now uh, I, I just get the, the absolute giggles at Tony Martin's new podcast called Sizzletown. It's not new anymore. It's in its second year called Sizzletown. Um, and I love other, you know, I, I love the art of the interview. So I listen to Alec Baldwin's Here's the Thing. Um, I listen to conversations with Richard Feidler. Yes. So, yeah, I kind of share it around. But, you know, what an inc- again, an incredible world we live in, hey, to be able to go to a device. You know, previously, you what, five years ago, well, you'd be hopping in your car, pushing a station, a radio station, and hoping <laughs> there was either, you know, Bonnie Tyler's Total Eclipse of the Heart was playing so you could smash it out in the car <laughs> or they were talking about something on talkback radio that was, a half, it was half interesting. Now you can hop in the car and there will be someone creating a piece of content somewhere in the world that is absolutely down your alley. And that's the beauty of, again, we've, it's a bit of a podcast-centric conversation, this, but that's just the, I just love the fact that um, that's, what, that's where we're at. Yeah, and look, even if it's not a huge audience, you know, let's say you're even getting a 1,000 a thousand downloads, 
uh, an episode. Um, awesome. You know, that's a ma- you know, like imagine how to even do speaking. Like I know you're great at speaking, but try to you know get every week a thousand people into a room. It's yeah. a nightmare. Whereas a podcast, like it takes me you know, half an hour to do that thing. I do a half an hour after. My team does all the rest, and that's it. You know? Yep. So, yeah, look, I, I couldn't agree more. And there's about 560 million podcasts if you go to Listen Notes. Um, and I'm sure it's going to grow. But like you said, if you do great content, know your audience and be helpful first, you'll get it right. Correct. So just before we go into the next section, I just yes. like to mention my daily posting of ac- actionable content on LinkedIn. So just search for corporate escapees and – oh, sorry, for corporate escapees. But if you just search for Build, Live, Give and uh, shout out how you heard us, uh, what – I'd love to get some feedback on how we can make this podcast uh, more valuable to you. And, um, yeah, I'd love to connect with you. So uh, the next section, Tim, is... Do you reckon, a, it's, do you reckon it's escapees or escapees? Uh, well, I say escapees, mm. corporate All escapees. Right. But um, I'll, I'll talk to you after the show because that <laughs> brand might be changing. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I will, I'll, it'll be an easy way to settle that debate. Yeah. Well, it could be neither or neither, so I don't know. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It depends what country as well. So correct. Yeah. Um, so the next one is around. Uh, you know, what are the, some of the habits that you do? Obviously, you go to the beach and that. But what are some of the other things that you know uh, help you be successful? Uh, I. Uh, that's an interesting question. I, look, I love. Um, I love a bit of me time. So I start my day uh, with an ocean swim uh, every other every second day. Yep. Uh, and in between, um, I do a spin class at gym, and I just think that really helps me clear my mind. Um, I meditate, um, and I think that's just an absolute game changer. Anyone who doesn't, um, I think probably have a, have a good look at it. Have a good, have a good look at yourself. <laughs> um, and um, um, so I think they really help me. Um, I... I don't, you know, I could, I, I, there's probably some really interesting business strategies that I do. I don't think there are. I just, like anyone else, I think the podcast has been fundamental to my success because it's created the boomerang effect of all these other things that are happening uh, in my life, um, from speaking to media to to publishing a book and all that kind of stuff. But um, uh, I just think enjoy what you do at the end of the day because, geez, I tell you what, life is short and... Um, yeah. You know, um, I think that I think people see it and hear it um, when they meet you. That hey, here's a bloke, here's a, here's someone who's really enjoying what they do, and they want to be around that. Yes. Um, because if you go back to corporate, there's a lot of miserable people, <laughs> and I'm being a bit harsh on corporate, but there's also a lot of miserable people in small business. But um, uh, you've just got to, um, I think, you just got to enjoy what you do, and that will attract others. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot, obviously for right reasons a lot of miserable people in a hospital. But you know, I recently spent a bit of time in there, and yes. it was amazing. These all these people complaining that there was cheese and no biscuits, and <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, I'm a creative guy, so I put my clothes on, go down to Aldi, buy a yes. bag full of European cheese, bring it back, and I'm sitting there eating cheese and biscuits, biscuits while I'm looking at everyone else that's complaining. There it's, you go. You know, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. You know, yeah. How, how do you? Uh, get above that. And for for you, the, the next section is the give section. I know you reached for, um, worked for Reach Youth um, uh, a little while ago, but what do you sort of do to give back other than the brilliant podcast that you put out for your community? A major one is the podcast. I mean, I, I was, um, I, it's an income earner for me because I have sponsors. Um, it is my, from a business point of view, it is a give. I see it as an absolute give. Um, it's free yeah, as yours is and all podcasts are to download and listen to. Um, so that's one way of giving back. Um, I do, I take on a number of free speaking engagements pro bono each year. Um, if a charity were to call uh, and they do, um, I always give them free advice. Um, and then I have two or three charities that I actually support on an ongoing basis. Um, and that's pretty much it. All right, brilliant. Well, the last section is the action section. I'll just ask you a couple of quick questions and get some rapid fire responses. So the first one is, you know, what are your top three productivity tips? Uh, meditation is number one. Yep. Is absolutely number one. A clear mind. You, you, can, you think clearly. You're open to ideas. The ideas flow. So... That's been that's been absolutely awesome, and I don't mean sitting cross legged with incense and you know Jesus sandals on. Um, I don't. No, it's not that. I mean it's as simple as 
Uh, not in once, public, anyway. Not in public, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I'll go home pretty shortly and put on the loincloth um, and I'll be away. But um, I, um, I was well, my track of track of thought. I've been very serious then, Paul. Um, what I mean with meditation is I will, I may sit there to 20 or 30 minutes with a guided meditation on, but I will also, I also set my watch to beep uh, on the hour, which um, I call jam, just a minute. And it's just, just, just literally just taking a minute um, and pausing, going back to the breath and just resetting. It's like, what do you, what do we used to do with the old um, computer defrag, you know, you defrag yes. your computer. Yes. So it's a bit like that. So um, productivity, number one, meditation. Um, product number product number two is exercise, and the third, more business focused one, is um, just having others uh, surrounding yourself with people who are good at what you are not. You know, so for example, uh, one thing um, I'm not good at is editing, um, and I just I, the, the thought of it just sends a shiver down my spine. So um, it would never edit. I don't even know how to edit. I don't know what programs do no, editing. I don't, correct. Um, I don't want to know any of it. Anything. No. About it. And, and I must say, having said that, I mean, I, I think I've been, I think I've held myself back in terms of growth by not surrounding myself with more people. I've never built a team. Um, I've got about three on my team now. You know, I've got a virtual assistant, I've got an editor and a producer, but I, um, you know, I've never really built it out. Um, and yeah, I think probably I could have had a, a greater level of success if I had, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm okay where I am, you know, and, um, uh, as long as I don't want to build an empire, which I don't, um, then it'll be cruisy. But I think surrounding yourself with good people is just, is just you know, again, a great productivity hack. And, uh, you know, you talked about the phone and how powerful it is. What, what do you use on the phone, you know, in your regular day that, that you really couldn't live without? Do you know, I, dry, I just, just got back from uh, Phuket a couple of days ago. I, I dropped my phone in the water, of course, about five days into the holiday, so I was phoneless. I had my MacBook with me. It stopped charging, so that oh. died. So I was actually off the grid, <laughs> oh. um, and it was bloody beautiful. Yeah. Jeez, it was good. Um, I am one of those guys, um, which is a bit kind of weird given the space that I work in of podcasting, but um, I sort of try to avoid bright, shiny objects, so I don't go looking for the next great app or the next great gadget. Um, I did just buy myself a Galaxy Watch, which is kind of interesting. So I'm a bit excited about sort of that, even though I'm an Apple guy. But I digress. With my phone, mate, I, I, I just, I mean, I have my podcast app. Um, I've got my social media apps. I like my PD, my Genius Scan, which is, you know, allows me to scan documents and send them off. I like Expensify. Um, I'm not a big. I'm not big on that. In fact, yeah. I'm really working hard to not look into screens. I'm just really. I was in Singapore coming home from Phuket um, a couple of days ago, and um, oh boy, oh boy, the entire population of Singapore is walking along the street looking down. Mm-hmm. It's pretty bad in Australia. You go to over. You go to an Asian country, and it is just off the charts. And um, good time to be a got, physio you know, over there. Awesome time. I mean, a mate of mine's a chiropractor. He bought it to my, I've got three teenage I've got three kids, 18, 20, 22. And um, uh, as they were growing up, my mate Ben, who's a chiropractor, he said, look, look at some of these people. Look at the posture on people. We'd sit at cafes and we'd point out people. And, you know, we are. We're just becoming, we're almost becoming horizontal whilst standing up. You know, it's, it's just, it's really sad. So I'm working hard to really not have too much screen time because I think the world's gone mad. Great. And the last question is, you know, what impact do you want to leave on this great planet of ours? Jeez, make it an easier question. No, I'd say the hardest to last. (laughs) Oh, gee, you know, what impact do I want to have? I feel like, you know, I want to be a great dad and I'm I'm really proud of what my kids have done. And if, um, if that's the only impact I leave, then happy days. Um, I'm really proud of what the, the small business big marketing show has done. Um, you know, the, the letters I get from listeners, I just look at them and go, really, really? I did that. My show did that. Um, that's pretty awesome. Um, and I'm not going to sort of shoot for anything further than that right now. Ask me next year. No, well, that's all right. Well, um, I, I take, I took a screenshot early on when I was, looking to launch my podcast and it basically mm. had you up against some of the 
what I'd recognise as the you know the the most famous podcasters, and there's oh, yeah. there's an Aussie guy sitting right amongst the pack. I was <laughs> I like, it. this is cool. <laughs> you know, I put it up, and it was like, you know, yeah, there you go. If you create yeah. content, you you can get there. So I think you well, know, well, that's interesting in itself. Again, just to finish up, you were talking about oh, you know, it's too late. The boats left the shore. It's a crowded marketplace. You would talk about any of this content stuff, the majority of the content out there right now is either American or UK based, mainly American. Yes. Um, and you're right. You know, you go to the top 10 in iTunes and I'm the only Aussie for marketing and business. And um, so there's plenty of room. There is plenty of room. Uh, you know, if you're an, an Aussie business owner or a startup or someone trapped in a, in a cubicle wanting to escape and create a, 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 a personal brand, then I think the opportunity is huge. Yeah, couldn't agree more. So look, brilliant having you on. Tim, Thanks, Paul. You've inspired me, but you've also inspired lots of people around the world to, you know, be better. Whether it's for them, if it's be better parents, spend more time down the beach, whatever. But having, you know, having a lifestyle and the freedom to be in control, I think you've inspired a lot of people to do that. And you can obviously find out more about Tim at Superfast. Uh, sorry, small business. <laughs> A fraudulent slip. Uh, I wonder small my business, editing. small yeah. business, big, big marketing.com marketing. or timreed.com.au. R E I D. And if, yes, yes. And, um, and we'll have all the links and everything you mentioned in the, the show notes. But uh, yeah, once again, great having you on. Pleasure, James. Oh, sorry, I meant Paul. <laughs> Thanks, Tim, mate. See you, mate. Cheers. Wow. How difficult is this? Coming up with three key things out of that brilliant episode by Timbo. So the first one is create killer content that is helpful. Really hit the nail. Second is double down on one modality. Uh, for Timbo, it's podcasting. For me, it's the same, for whatever it is for you, but just do one really well. And the third thing is grow a business which suits your lifestyle and stay humble. I think Tim is living that. He's an absolute superstar, but he's such a lovely guy and he's living in the environment he loves. So, um, you know, he doesn't want to grow a multi-million dollar business and he's happy with that. I think that's such a great message. So you can get the links and the show notes at buildlivegive.com forward slash podcast. And if you're a corporate escapee and you'd love to share your amazing and inspiring story, just like Timbo's, email support at buildlivegive.com. So please take action from today to live your dream life. Thank you for listening to the Corporate Escapees podcast brought to you by Build Live Give. If you would like to join a community of like-minded peers, please visit www.buildlivegive.com. Until next time, thanks for listening and be brave.